She's got the power. Hey, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm your product specialist, Wesley, and today we're doing the assembly and setup video for the all new 90 millimeter Eurofighter here from Freewing. Guys, this one is one sweet jet. Can't wait to show you more about it, but without further ado, let's get down on the table and get this thing unboxed. First thing you're gonna see is the Eurofighter comes in two pieces of foam. We're gonna go on and move one off to the side here and get into the box. Our first bag we're gonna check out is our tail section. Now you can see that mine came with pre-applied decals. Yours will not. We are gonna be coming out of the box without any decals on the model. You're gonna just add these yourself. We had a lot of customers ask us to do a base gray for the tail and the canards so that customers could add their own graphics to it in the future. But these will be supplied in the box. Next part we're gonna get out is your nose cone. As you can see, it's magnetic with a plastic tip on the end of it. Next part coming out of the box is gonna be the nozzles for the back of the airplane. This is where the exhaust is. Nice plastic ones. Now you can see we've got the canopy. As you can see, it's finished off in plastic on the inside, has a nice pilot. Next piece out of the box is gonna be your carbon spar for your wing. All right, now we're gonna get our canards opened up. As you can see, mine are wrapped, like I said, out of the box, but yours are not gonna be. They're gonna be just base gray. All right, now you have your drop tanks. These are gonna be affixed with magnets on the bottom of the wing, so they are removable. In the corner of the box, you're gonna find all of your different missiles. And now the biggest piece, this is your fuselage. As you can see, it comes wrapped in plastic. Take your time getting this off. The wing spar was actually poked through, but you can go on and take that wing spar and discard it. It is not used in the model. That is only for shipping. You have the long wing spar that you're gonna use for the actual assembly. All right, on to the other half of our foam. Let's go on and cut into this very carefully so as to not damage anything. And here's our first wing half. Like I said, take your time getting the plastic off of your model. You don't want to damage it trying to open it. As you can see, the finish on this wing is fantastic. It's as you expect on your free wing models. Now you can see this is the aft section of the airplane. This little part glues on. Some more missiles. These are the ones that mount underneath the fuselage. There should be four of these. Next, you have your two bombs. These also are gonna mount on the wing. Next thing out of the box is gonna be all of your missile rails. Two of these are gonna glue on, the rest of them are just gonna clip in using our uh, missile attachment points that are pre-made into the airplane. And these are your wing tips. What you will notice is these are made out of plastic on this model instead of foam. This is gonna make these last a lot longer. You've got your LEDs built right into them. And the last part to come out of the box is gonna be this bag of assorted screws and hardware. Tech specs for the Eurofighter Typhoon 90 millimeter EDF. It has a wingspan of 1,030 millimeters or 40.5 inches. A length of 1,450 millimeters or 57 inches. This model's coming with our brand new 3668-1960 kV brushless in-runner motor. It's a 12-bladed EDF. The ESC is a 120 amp with an 8 amp BEC included. This model takes seven channels to use all the functions of it, but can be ran with a six channel radio. Landing gear is retractable and is pre-painted white right out of the box. And the battery is a 6S 22 volt 5,000 milliamp LiPo battery. First step when assembling your Eurofighter is to glue the aft section of the model on. Now I took a little bit of sandpaper and sanded the surfaces to help it affix the glue to the surface. Now I'm using the provided white tube glue that comes in a lot of our free wing models for my assembly, but you could also use CA in this step without any adverse effects. Just slots in, keys there, and make sure it's stuck. Now it's time to glue our nozzles onto the aft of the airplane. 
Go on and be liberal when you apply this glue back here. We don't want these to fall off. Slide your nozzles on. Go on and slide them on and off a few times if you're using the same white glue I am. This just helps it kind of set up and make a strong bond. Now it's time to get our forward canards installed on the airplane. You'll see that there's a metal pin that comes right here. You're gonna wanna slide that out. Use your thumb from the inside of the airplane to push out on it as you put your canard on. That way the pin doesn't slide back in. You're gonna line it up with the hole from the top and then you're gonna take a two millimeter countersunk Allen screw and fasten it on. At this point, we're gonna go on and install our wing tips. As you can see, they have an LED and a keyed in feature to where you can only put them on the right side. This won't let you put the wrong wing tip on the wrong side. Go on and match color to color so it's red to red and black to black, and then key it in and work the wire into the wing tip so you don't squish it as you put the wing tip on. Once you have the wing tip in, you'll need your two millimeter Allen heads again with the countersunk screw. I'm using my Benchcraft screwdriver for this and go on and tighten those down. All right, at this point, we're gonna be installing the wing on the airplane. You have two spars that were in this. Remember, the one that was in the box, you're gonna throw away. The big long one is what you're actually gonna to use to attach your wing. Now this first time you can go on and just carefully open those center doors and slide your wing halves on. Then you have the multi-connector. It's just one wire that comes out that's gonna clip into your wing. You're gonna go on and clip that in and then slot your wing all the way in. Now let's get the other wing on. Same thing, we're gonna put our multi-connector on and then slide it all the way in. All right, now we need to put our wing screws into the airplane. There are six of these special screws that are gonna go into your wing halves. They're designed to screw down and then drop into the wing where they won't come out during transport. After you get these installed, they should just stay in there forever. Now we need to get our rudder installed. Let's flip it over and you'll see a servo connector coming out of the bottom of it. We need to connect that to the other one, yellow to yellow, brown to brown. Then we're gonna fit the rudder down onto the fuselage. Be careful not to pinch any of the wires while you do this. Then we're gonna take our four Allen key number two screws and attach the rudder. Now we need to get our nose cone attached. It's as simple as popping it on the front. It is magnetic and there is a cutout to make sure it keys in only one direction. Now let's flip the model over and glue on our ordnance rails. There are two of them that are gonna glue on. These are for your drop tanks to attach to. Then the outside rails just key into place. This makes it easy to take them on and off if you don't want to fly with them. Now we need to glue all of our peripherals on. We have four little pitot tubes up on the front that we're gonna glue in. Then we have a little antenna that goes on the top of the scoop right beside your nose wheel. The tail hook on the aft section of the airplane and then we need to just clip all of our bombs and missiles onto the airplane. All right, at this point, we are ready to start setting up the model. All I've done is gone on ahead and plugged in my receiver and put in the battery. Now on receivers, you need at least six channels to fly this model, but seven if you wanna use all of its features. If you decide to use a six channel, you're gonna either have to pick to not use your air brake or your thrust reversing. So you'll have one open port if you're running a six. Now, we've got it powered on. We're gonna start going through the initial setup. So first thing we're gonna do is go on and put the gear down. So I'm gonna flip that switch. You can see all the doors open. Then the gear are gonna come out. Now, this first time we fire it up, the switch is actually flipped inside the airplane that keeps the doors from closing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more after I get it flipped over, but now we can get it off of the stand and flip the model over on the table. So this little red switch right here tells the gear doors on the back of the airplane to either stay open or stay closed. This is so whenever you're assembling the airplane at the field, it's a lot easier to slide the wings in if you can have those open. So now that we have the wings on and attached, I'm gonna flip it to the on position and the doors actually just closed right then. 
Okay, now that we have the airplane powered on for our first time, we need to make sure all our flight control surfaces are going the correct direction. So if I go up and down, I can see that the wing is correct, but the canards is operating the wrong direction. Let me show you that one more time. Up and down. So the canards are backwards. The way to fix this is not in a radio setting. It's as simple as going to our controller board and we're going to flip the two canard ports the opposite way and that should fix it. And if I go left and right, that looks correct, but up and down is backwards. So let's flip those real quick and see what that does. All right, now that we've flipped our two ports, they should be correct. So when we go up, they are correct now. When we go down, they are correct now. And if we go left, correct again, and right, correct again. And you can see now how I've got this on the table, so you can see how your canards need to be also. Our next function check is gonna be the rudder, left and right, and that is also correct. Uh, we need to assign uh, any open channel you want. For me, I use channel six as a two position switch for the air brake. And it's just off and on. So 100 and 100 for your positions. There's that. Now, the other thing I did is went on ahead and put uh, my thrust reverse on the bind button if you're flying Spectrum, because it's a momentary button. And the way I did it is just assign channel seven to a momentary button on the controller. That way, whenever I'm landing and I want thrust reverse, I can't accidentally flip this in the sky. So if I give it a little bit of throttle, all I have to do is push my momentary on channel seven, and it goes into reverse thrust. If I go, it goes back into forward thrust. That way I can't accidentally put it in reverse thrust in flight. And that's where I would recommend you put yours also. Uh, that would be Ox 2 on Spectrum, uh, or Fataba, it would be Channel 7. All right, now let's talk about the neutral position of your canards. As you can see, there's actually a little line embossed into the foam on both sides. That little line is to the center of your canards when you're in your neutral position. As you can see, when I go up and down, it comes back to rest right there on that line. That's what you want for your canard's center position. All right, if you needed to make an adjustment to your canards, it's done right here in the front of the airplane. As you can see, here are the canard mechanism. All you would need to do is pop the ball link off and spin it in or out to make that finute adjustment to your model. All right, our next step to check is go around the model and make sure all of our control surfaces are level and flush around the airplane. You can check your rudder. You'll see there's actually a line right down here in the middle and a line here at the top. If you're looking on it from the back section, make sure everything is straight. Go around the model, check all of your different control surfaces. Remember the canards are their own thing. They need to go to that line. If you have all that ready, now we're ready to put some rates in this airplane. All right, let's talk about your rates now for this airplane. So what I have for ailerons is 35 millimeters for my high, 24 millimeters for my mid, and 16 millimeters for my low. And then for elevator, I have 40 millimeters for high, 35 millimeters for mid, and 25 millimeters for my low. All right, our last step to do in the airplane setup on our pre-flight here is to calibrate our ESC. The way we do this is we're gonna take our transmitter, go full throttle, then we're gonna plug the airplane in. Now we're gonna go down to zero, and you'll hear it arm. So what you're trying to do there is when you have it in full throttle, you plug your ESC in, you're gonna hear two beeps, and at that point, pull your throttle stick all the way down. 
you'll then hear the airplane arm. That sets the high and low point of your throttle stick to make sure you're getting the full performance out of your EDF unit. So there you have it, the Freewing Eurofighter 90mm assembly. Let's go over a couple of the little features and cool parts that make this one a little bit different than any of the models that have come before it. So the Eurofighter actually has a new style of cheater fan ducts on the top of the airplane. And as the motor spools up and requires more air, it actually will just pull the ducts open and let more air down into the fan. Very cool. It's a nice clean way of doing cheaters where you don't have just holes in the airplane. The model also comes with a functioning air brake. Uh, this is servo driven. All you need to do is plug it into an open channel with a two position switch to open and close that. This is also the first model from Freewing in our larger format to have a re thrust reversing ESC inside of it. We've done it on a few of our smaller models, but this is our first full frame airplane to come with this. The airplane is absolutely covered in LED lights. You've got a strobe on top. You've got strobes on both wing tips. You've got a strobe on the bottom. Landing lights in underneath the gear. Very cool, all the lights on this airplane. This is also the first free wing model to come equipped with painted gear right out of the box. Very cool to see it. I love it. I hope that we can see this on maybe some future models here at Motion RC, but the white painted gear is looking very good. So that about wraps it up. I hope you guys have decided to check one of these out. Links will be available down in the description. As always, check us out over at MotionRC.com. Uh, you can also follow us over on Facebook. The Motion RC customer community is always a fun place to be hanging out. Talk to your buddies. Well, I, I can't wait to see some of you guys get these airplanes and start customizing them. It's always a joy to see what our customers actually end up doing with the models once they get them. So without further ado, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next episode here at Motion RC. Bye, guys.